We are live. There we are. Firing up. We're good to go. Good evening. Hi, everyone. We got enough lighting. The lighting good. Yeah. I'm going to slide over just a tad bit. That one's live. So that was live. There we are. I can see Dave. Hey, Ooh. there you are. It's looking at me. <laughs> good evening, everyone. This is uh, I am Dave, and this is my beautiful wife. Marsha Ann, we are the Condens. And this is our uh, Thursday night Unstuck Unplugged. And, oops, tonight's topic is going to be... We've been talking, we have a six-part series on codependency, and um, yeah. this week's topic will be on boundaries, because that's one area that, as a codependent, uh, you... I know, for me, I didn't even know what boundaries was. No, we didn't. I didn't have any boundaries. You don't... You're not taught boundaries growing up, so therefore you're not going to even know how to establish them or what they look like. Um, boundaries might even be, in a sense, something you don't like, you know, because that's the thing with somebody who has, we'll say, part of their codependency and one of the traits is a need to fix and control and make everything look just so, so they feel safe. Um, that is a coping um I guess a coping mechanism or way of coping that they established as a child to help feel safe, and so they just take that into adulthood too. Right, if everything's so, in order, <clears throat> we are good to go. Yeah, that's where a lot of times you know the obsessive compulsive disorders come in. Uh, you know, it's like I, I need to stay and keep everything lined up and everything dot my eyes, cross my t's, and then because there's something within you that feels unsafe, mm -hmm. feels safe if, if things are lined up right. Um, and organized. So, um, part of that coping skill <clears throat> is that you will, uh, in many cases, not have boundaries. Um, you won't, boundaries won't even feel um, safe or comfortable for you. You're not, you don't want boundaries in a sense. Right. Um, <clears throat> and in, in most cases when they need to be in control and they need to fix everything and they need to have everything a certain way, they're not going to like it when you put up a boundary. And so you will know right away when somebody has, has got really some wounding in their inner child when they um, get very offended that you might have even said no. Um, and I or, think that's or if you're if you're, or if you're establishing a boundary, they may uh, get offended by that. That's what I'm, yeah. Yeah. Because so saying no is a boundary. Right. Um, it's one of the boundaries. There's many ways to have boundaries and uh, many ways to establish boundaries in a relationship and that and towards yourself to recognize your own boundaries too. That, okay, wait, unless I'm asked for advice, let me not just give it. Mm. Um, because in some cases, fixing and rescuing and giving advice, um, you're crossing the bound their boundary if they didn't actually invite you in to fix to rescue so it's being mindful of respecting the other person honoring the other person even if they haven't in a sense clarified where the boundary line is you though can establish your own healthy boundaries um, and be mindful of when you possibly are crossing someone else's I mean we know Simple boundary cross is, of course, if somebody has uh, spoken curse words at you, they've oh. been toxic with their tongue, they might even physically um, push you or shove you or do so. That's definite, a definite boundary Crossing crossing. Boundary right there. That's very obvious. But what's not as obvious is when you cross boundaries um, that we'll just say talking about someone behind their back you just crossed a boundary you just you just talked about someone who's not even there and present to defend themselves so in a sense you just you um, became that non that unsafe person um, unaware of of healthy boundaries and um, what are some others that you can think of not one of the you know crossing a boundary is also not um, being honoring and respectful to the other person you're in a relationship with and just saying yes for the two of you and you didn't even ask that's overstepping your boundaries you just cross into a place that is is for that person to decide mm -hmm. um, and those are things that we can do we're not even aware of um, but most of the things with codependency just giving 13 warning signs of codependency um, one <laughs> you have trouble 
articulating your feelings and emotions. Um, so if you cannot articulate your feelings and emotions, you're not going to be able to establish boundaries in that area. And to be able to say, oh, you just crossed a boundary because um, you just, you know, I was trying to share my feelings with you um, the best I could and you just shut me down. There's a boundary crossing that the other person is doing. And if you don't even know how to articulate your feelings, there's no way that you can even establish that boundary where that person's going to even know, oh, wait, I crossed a boundary. Because it's up to us to inform the other person. Hey, um, I'd like to speak here. I need to share my heart. Are you willing to listen? And you can have this adult conversation uh, instead of one person dominating the other. There's no boundaries there. Um, you, too, you want to be liked by everyone. No boundaries. You don't care who's going to come into your life. I'm an open door. Does everybody come in, even if you're toxic and you have a history mm. of um, alcoholism, drug addiction, wife beating, whatever, or, you know, uh, we see with the Amber Heard trial, I mean, this is someone with unhealthy boundaries. And just let everybody in. When the healthy, a healthy person is going to say, wait a minute, I am worthy and I want to healthy people in my circle so I don't I'm gonna be a little you know cautious about a person uh, welcoming them in welcoming them into my inner circle first I'm gonna set up some healthy boundaries and it's not that you're being standoffish it's that you're being healthy <laughs> and you're thinking in a healthy way and what is best for you you can jump on in here anytime I could mr. D Three. You want to do three? <laughs> is, is that because you believe I struggle with three? Nah. Uh, no, I haven't even read it yet. <laughs> uh, you feel the need to control and fix oh, others. Oh, I didn't even read it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even read and it. And I'm like, ah, oh, great. That's funny. There it is. <gasps> Bringing it back up again. No. I didn't even read it yet. Okay. So, how would that be a boundary? Explain no, that. I don't know about, about, about a boundary, but it's definitely a. a a sig signal of what a codependent is, someone that does not have the ability to um, uh, control their control of wanting to control someone else or wanting to go fix something. Or so you don't even care about the other person's boundaries? Nope. nope. I'm just even if they I'm have gonna, them, you don't care. You I'm just going to fix that issue for you. Yep. You're crossing all sorts of boundaries yeah, to get so. there. You feel the need, the, the need. need to control somebody else. <laughs> 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 okay, four. You have trouble setting clear boundaries. In your life. In your life. Even your own life. We cannot give what we don't have. We cannot um, even really, in a sense, receive from somebody else what we don't even want to have within ourselves. So if we are boundaryless, we're not going to even be able to respect someone hey. else's boundaries. We don't know what yeah. it looks like. And that's where you show yourself grace because it's like, wait... If I wasn't taught it in my family of origin and you did not see your parents demonstrate healthy boundaries with each other or siblings or brother and sister, Ellie, she does not understand her boundaries right now, um, then you're not going to know to do that as you get older. So it is something you have to re reteach yourself. Like we had to reteach ourselves this. We read some great books, um, Braving by Brene Brown. I'm just, it is a great book. The B is for boundaries, and it's just a great book on explaining it. Um, and then, of course, the boundary doctor, um, Henry Cloud, Cloud and Townsend, they're kind of the, the boundary kings. <laughs> so, a great, great book on boundaries. Are we on uh, number, yeah, number Four. five. Number five. Uh, you set aside mm -hmm. your own interests and needs to do what others want. Basically, you're people a people pleasing. pleaser, so there's no boundaries no either. Boundaries you don't either. even have boundaries for your own time. Mm -hmm. There's no time boundaries, no um, self. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to be good to myself boundaries, nothing. Okay. Six. You are loyal to a fault. Hmm. Sit with that one for a while. Yeah, I know. Hmm. Whew. So he hits me. And it says under that. Just so when you want it broken down, uh, codependent people tend to remain in harmful situations uh, for far too long uh, just to hold on to a relationship, even if it is 
not working. So there's you're not seeing the, the, the boundary for yourself that, wait, this is what I talked about earlier about the toxic people, harmful people, but you'll stay there to be loyal. But in really, it's the sense is you don't have any respect for yourself either. Um, they may feel trapped in a relationship. And if they do eventually leave, they often um, fall into another unhealthy relationship soon after because they are searching for fulfillment and happiness in someone else. Let me repeat that. Because they are searching for fulfillment and happiness in someone else. And the, right there, mm -hmm. that's red flag. If I had <laughs> red... <laughs> Throwing a flag. We're not... That right there will just lead you down a pathway of self-destruction because there is no way anybody can fulfill your happiness. That is something within you. And there's no way anyone can fulfill anything other than Jesus. I mean, when you look to Jesus for fulfillment, you're going to find happiness. When you're looking into a per man or woman, they're not perfect and they're not to be your source of happiness. Mm -hmm. So right there, that's the identity. That is the poisonous part of codependency. Seven, you need, you tend to ignore um, or deny problems. So under that, it says instead of finding healthy resolutions for personal issues, codependent people tend to ignore problems and pretend that everything is fine. Um, they may also convince themselves that the lies uh, they tell themselves are true and seek sol solace from problems in food, drugs, alcohol, work, or other things. <clears throat> so that is where I've even, I know I've talked about where you'll justify even what you're doing. You'll justify your sin. You'll, you'll, you'll make excuses for it. It's obvious to everybody else, but to someone walking in this where you, you ignore and deny your own problems. It's the denial part of an addiction. Eight. Uh, you suppress thoughts and feelings out of fear or guilt. So basically, instead of expressing your anger or hurt, you uh, will suppress those emotions and not uh, bring those up. So basically what you're doing is you're shutting yourself down. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And in many cases that happened because you were shut down and in your mm. family of origin, you were you were made to feel well. No one can make you feel guilty, yeah. but you were told you can't. You don't mm. have a voice. You know, I don't. You know, yeah. um, what is the one that I know I've talked about? You won't. Um, you want something to cry about? By that, I'll give you something to cry about. Or you're not speaking unless spoken to. Those right there are not setting up even being able to handle emotional boundaries. It's like okay, mm. I'm angry right now. I want to tell you, I've talked yesterday, I did a little thing on feelings are like the weather subject to change. They're not to be something that you um, are grounded in and found there's your foundation. And I'm established in this emotion because it's not going to be a solid foundation. And so if you, the, the Bible and nowhere in the, um, in Genesis, does it say that God uh, did not, um, was not pleased with the way he created man. And, and matter of fact, in everything he created, he would say, and it is good. But after he created Adam, he said it is very good. So within Adam was emotions, and they were very good. Mm -hmm. uh, what becomes bad, or what we can create then and make our emotions bad, is, is of course if we sin by them, where therefore if we don't have healthy boundaries, and we allow the emotion to reign. We get angry, but then we sin in our anger. Uh, we get jealous and we sin with the jealousy. We get envious, we sin with it. Um, you know, lust, greed, however you might, there, some of them start their innocent emotions, but we can then take it too far and we can then sin within these emotions. So there is a boundary, being able to say, oh, I feel sad right now. Let me process through that. Let me process through it in a healthy way. If I can't figure it out, let me ask someone to help me. So you're doing it in a healthy way and you've established healthy boundaries within your emotions so that they don't um, run all over you and then run all over somebody else, which then you haven't established healthy boundaries for them either. You've just vomited on them. Therefore, you didn't care about what their boundaries were. <clears throat> you know what you have to own and you don't own someone else's. Um, this kind of goat, where were we? Which one was that one? Uh, 
low self. That was the other one. Okay, that was eight. Okay, so nine is you have low self esteem and self worth. Which that pretty much. Um, instead of developing a true sense of self-worth, codependent people may build up artificial self-esteem and self-worth from helping others so that you're getting fed mm -hmm. by people pleasing. And that's how you're getting your uh, accolades and your um, you cope even by doing that. So when you're not doing that, you're going to be at a loss. You're not going to even know how to do really do life. Mm -hmm. um, and there's the boundary too where not I can't say no to anyone. I've got to people please. So I'm just gonna say yes, 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 yes. I haven't established healthy boundaries for myself. Even God knew that he had rest on the seventh day. He worked for the six, he rested on the seven. He knew what his boundaries were and what his limits were. Okay, ten, you feel responsible for other people's feelings and actions. Yeah, because you're that powerful. Mm. I'm just gonna say that and let that sit there for a little while. Yeah, you're responsible for everybody's feelings and actions because they don't need Jesus. They don't need to go to him. But since people pleasers and fixers need that to feel better about themselves, they in a sense build themselves up. Mm -hmm. And there's an underlying issue there, something deep within that they need that. It's a need now. It's, it's, a, it's a need where um, they need to be wanted. They need to be the person to go to to, to make it all better. But you're you're taking it once again. You're not uh, understanding your boundaries and and where you're crossing them. And um, I don't. If they haven't asked me, then I don't have to step over and do anything. And I can be okay with that. I can be okay not being asked. I can be even okay not being asked to a party or a wedding or something because it's it's okay. I don't. I'm not. Um, my existence and who I am isn't defined by that. You got anything to add to that? I know. Okay. Um, you have poor communication skills. That's right. You don't even know what you feel. <laughs> You've been in many cases told how to feel or not told how to feel. Right. Boys don't cry. Don't you shed a tear. I'll give you something to cry about. Or they're told that you're weak because you cried. So that's in the set. There's they're right there. You automatically believe the lie, and so therefore you suppress those emotions. But they they're gonna go somewhere. So they just sit inside and eat away. Um, you, twelve. You are withdrawn and depressed. Um, this often occurs in the late stage of codependency. Codependent people tend to um, isolate themselves, neglect their responsibilities. Um, become lethargic and depressed or develop mental problems on an, um, an addiction to things and or alcohol. So there's, there's even where you're, you That's can a coping be, mechanism. yeah, still once again coping. But bottom line is um, you're withdrawn and depressed because you haven't learned how to process through your emotions. You're taking on everybody else's stuff. You feel responsible for it all. That's why it says it's like at the end, you've kind of gone through all of it. You've attracted other toxic people to you because you don't have safe boundaries. Mm -hmm. You've put way too many things on your plate and have said yes to things that you just don't have time to do because you don't have any time boundaries either. So by this point, you are just you're yeah. done. And 13, last but not least, drum roll, please. <laughs> I feel like, not Johnny Carson, but um, who was the one that did the 10, um, and he had the cards, yeah. and he had, Johnny. was it Johnny Carson, yeah, or was it the other one? The, the, David, no, it was the one that came out of the David Letterman. David Letterman had the, the 10. <laughs> <laughs> but this is 13, sorry, just side note there. Uh, you, re you refuse to seek help because you feel like the problem isn't bad enough. That's the, you basically, you don't have self boundary for yourself, to, for self care. And you haven't ever walked your life and journey of your life getting to know yourself, mm -hmm. learning about yourself, learning who you are, welcoming the, the you. Um, celebrating who you are, get you know, just being you, uh, because you're instead being what everyone else needs you to be, and and making sure everybody else is okay. So you haven't established even um, a place where you can just be okay with you. So, 
And that's why they, you stay in codependency, too. Until you become aware, you'll just, because it's an right. addiction. It's a relationship addiction. And so you've got to be in a relationship, no matter how horrible it is, just to be in a relationship. And sometimes you have to be in a whole lot of relationships. Just because the more people you feel like you're helping and fixing and involved with, you just somehow feel there's a, you have a sense of self there. But you don't have a sense of self with yourself. If that made sense. It's a lot of self. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, and the key is, is um, a healthy, interdependent person is going to be aware that they are a separate human mm -hmm. with separate desires and separate longings and separate dreams and separate hopes, separate giftings, whether um, he, doing spiritual things or non-spiritual, you just separate talents, um, opinions, mindsets, and it's you're separate and a healthy interdependent person has understands boundaries they understand um, where the boundaries are even for themselves where the other persons are and they're honoring and respectful yeah mm -hmm. and the heart the part of this is the heart the heart um, the heart too it's, it's the part of ha being a healthy person and having healthy heart <laughs> boundaries you know, with emotions, with how people treat you, who's in your life, who's speaking life into you, who you're doing life with, who you choose as someone to be in life with you, even how you raise your kids, this honor and respect, um, this ebb and flow here, so much has to do with heart. Because, you know, the Bible says that um, above all else, guard your heart because everything flows from it. Well, if you don't have safe boundaries for yourself and you let all kinds of people in, your heart is going to be subjected to painful things, whether it's spoken at you, done to you, um, you know, cursed at you, yelled at you, whatever it may be. And, and so, therefore, you're allowing your heart um, to be subjected to painfulness and to trauma. And so that's why it's so important. It doesn't mean you have these walls all up around your heart. But you're just aware of that. Hey, I love my heart. My heart is is good. Uh, my heart is to be protected. So therefore, I'm going to establish safe boundaries, um, and I'm going to make sure that I don't allow certain people to cross those boundaries. And if they do, well, then I have that difficult conversation, and I'm aware then that whether they're not going to be in my inner circle or not. And it's okay. And as a codependent, that's hard. And we know, we know, we've been there. It's very hard. To have sometimes those difficult conversations to express your feelings and then to just sometimes not have a person in that inner circle anymore and sometimes you have to change friendships um, know that it's okay that person's going to be okay and you're going to be okay yes you got any last words of wisdom mr uh, d no we're just about running out of time okay yeah, yeah. we want to be honoring of time that's a boundary we were at, um yep so we just couple minutes left here so finish up yeah it up. yeah well, we appreciate you guys. Yes. Thank you so much for joining in, whether on these feeds or... Hey, later. Shannon! <laughs> or, or later on, uh, later on when you watch them. Right, or, right. or on the YouTube After channel. You or, it. Yes, so yeah. we appreciate it. We appreciate all the feedback you give us also. Uh, right, else. right, we really do. And next week will be our last one on this series, and I really feel like we're going to be hitting um, the shame and the rejection. Mm -hmm. Kind of okay. going after that. It might change, but I know that's something he's been weighing on um, my heart. So, but, and this is all about the heart. The Lord's been really uh, expressing the, the need for heart transformations. And part of codependency, it doesn't even allow, allow it doesn't even allow God in, in a way that he needs to come in. Um, because you're, you in a sense, are even going to try to fix him. Mm. Woo! I don't know, that let that one be. Mm. That's just like we try to fix God too and put him in this box and make sure he's doing what we think he's supposed to do and we can put boundaries around him or, or boundaries around our heart to the point where we don't even allow him in. So it's it's so important to know that there's um there's safe boundaries and healthy boundaries and then there's unsafe and unhealthy. Yeah. But the heart be good to your heart. Love on your heart. Speak life into your heart. And we're going to do that right now really quick as we just speak life and love into your heart. And just even put your hands over your heart right now. Um, and Father God, I just ask that you would release uh, release the pain. Lord, I know that you are a um, 
per, the most powerful heart surgeon. And you can completely transform hearts uh, where they don't even have to go through any kind of process. You can just do it because you are that powerful. You are that loving. You are that perfect. And we just I just ask now that that is the kind of heart transformation that you would release now um, to whomever is watching is that their heart and where pain has come in, where trauma has come in, where fear has come in, where rejection has come in, where neglect has come in, uh, where abandonment has come in, where disapproval has come in, where disappointment has come in, where hopelessness has come in. Father, I ask that those would be released now by the blood of Jesus, that it would release it from their hearts, from deep in the core within their hearts, where even parts are cracked and bleeding, where some bruising has even occurred. Father, I just ask for that to, to, to be released, to go to the foot of the cross, and to now breathe life back into their heart. Bandage up, take the gold thread of heaven and stitch the heart back up, Jesus, with your perfectly steady still hands with the loving touch that you have stitch it up massage it back to brand new even resuscitate them lord where they have died in a sense in certain parts of their heart because it had gotten so hardened may you resuscitate it may you bring life back into it and um, breathe life back into them holy spirit breathe Breathe, breathe that rock breath of God back into them, just like you did with Adam and you breathe life into him. And he he was then face to face with you. I ask, Father, that their heart would be touched that way, where that they would be a changed person, a new creation with a new heart, a new mind, um, a new awareness of who they are in you and that they are accepted by you no matter what. No matter if they were never accepted before, ever before this point, they, to know that you accept them, you approve of them, you say they are enough, they matter, each one matters to you, that you created them for a reason, and I ask, Lord, that you would release that to them as well, that you would just go and start ordering them step, their steps and direct them in the way, in the pathways that you have desired for them, hmm. but heal their heart, Lord. Heal their heart, even in the night. Just be healing their heart. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we love uh, you guys, and thanks for joining thank us. You. We'll see you Share next week. Share this. Yeah, and we'll see you next week. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.